Hello everyone and welcome back to another video, those who are watching on YouTube and those who are watching on Twitch, hello and welcome to the stream. Today I've got something very special to do, I'm going to be doing a road to 2k or rather a Harris guide to 2k in which I will go from 1000 ELO and from below that all the way up to 2k and give my tips and tricks for every 100 block of ELO. For example, if you're at 1000 ELO to 1100, I'm going to spend 30 minutes and explain what things you should be working on, what things you should be learning, and how to actually improve to get to the next step. Age of Empires is a very complex game, so if I simply tell you everything you need to know from the start, your brain is going to get overloaded and you're going to pretty much just blow up before you actually learn to do anything. So that's not helping anyone, certainly not helping me, uh, and certainly not helping you as well. So. Again, the idea is to break it down into digestible bites that you guys can actually consume and learn step by step to eventually work up to a very, very solid base. Now, I've prepared some notes on the side that's going to be helping me to pinpoint, you know, the exact points you should be looking looking towards improving at every single ELO, and we're going to be going through it step by step. Those who are watching on Twitch, this will be covered all in one day, and those watching on YouTube, this will be uploaded one week at a time in parts, hopefully 10 parts total, uh, with one introduction and then another part for every 100 ELO we cover. Without further ado, let's just hop right into it and get started with the new players. So I'm going to go into single player right off the bat here. So if you're new to the game, and I'm not talking like you're a beginner and you've been playing for a long time, I'm talking like you're brand new to the game or you've been playing with your friends, you know, against AIs, you've been doing the campaigns, you're not quite ready for multiplayer just yet. I'm going to tell you how to make that step to get into the multiplayer without just going in there and getting completely destroyed without knowing what actually happened. And this is very important to anyone who's just coming into the game or has had it for a long time and hasn't, you know, quite, um, you know, quite started playing yet, whatever the case may be. So for new players, my best suggestion is to learn at your own pace. Uh, obviously, there's different ways to get into the game. Find something that's fun for you because the only thing you need to do is simply learn the basics, the very basics of the game. Don't really get into build orders, don't really get into uh, what kind of strategies you can do. Just learn the overall view of the game and the point of it. So for example, the point is to uh, develop your base from the Dark Age, work your way up towards Feudal, towards Castle Age, and towards Imperial Age, you know, rise through the ages, and expand your economy, expand your military, and kill your opponents. That's at the, at the base of the game, that's what it's about, right? We're not going to get into anything too specific here. So to learn these basics, a, a very good way is to just do the campaigns. If that's what you have fun with, I suggest do the campaigns, learn the different kind of units that they present you with, learn the basics of what kind of resources there are, food, wood, gold, and stone. And then if you're past that part or if you don't like the campaigns, you can also take a look at the AIs. So the AIs, they have got a lot of difficulties here. Easiest, standard, moderate, hard, hardest, and extreme. I suggest you go from the start, start at easiest, and just play a one-on-one -on -one game versus the AI. This gives you an introduction to what multiplayer will look like without giving you the added stress of feeling like you're playing against another human being, feeling like they're going to be much stronger than you, and feeling like you can't pause the game and take time to yourself to breathe and to think. So AI is a really good stepping stone without having that added stress of multiplayer, as I just said. So uh, I highly suggest you take it one step at a time, for your AIs if you're brand new to the game here. So start with easiest, if you can beat them, move on to standard, move on to moderate, and really just learn the basics of the game. Nothing too special, nothing too special, sorry, uh, and you know, nothing too, uh, too specific. The next thing I wanna talk about if you're new to the game is to start adding hotkeys. Hotkeys are very important for Age of Empires, and it's again something that in of itself can be very overwhelming. If I tell you, add every single hotkey from the start, you're not gonna remember any of them. So my advice is to start learning very few hotkeys. For example, you seed a lot of farms during your average game. I would say it's the hotkey you use the most, maybe farm and the house hotkey. So I would say learn to you know, make those buildings using hotkeys. That's two hotkeys you can learn right off the bat that will help your game quite a lot, actually. So pick up basic hotkeys like that. I suggest you do one or two at a time, learn them, and then add in a couple other new ones. Don't get into too many fancy hockeys, don't try to add too many hockeys at once because you're going to end up overwhelming yourself. The idea if you're you know new to the game and you know you're you haven't really played online yet is just to learn the game at your own pace and have fun with it and then when you're ready when you feel like you've learned quite a you know quite a little bit of the game and you want to take a stab at multiplayer and you're not too nervous to play because I do know ladder anxiety gives a lot of people problems then I recommend you get started with some online games and you learn to play some one-on-one -on -one versus the fellow other members of the community, the other fellow members of the community. 
how do we say this? This is an AB class, not an English class. So anyway, let's, let's just go on to the next uh, topic here. And this is just an introduction. If you're new to the game, what you should be doing, what you should be looking for. But let's hop in to what you should do if you're 1000 ELO or below and you're t starting your journey onto the ranked ladder. So for 1000 ELO below, I have a few points that you want to focus on. The, the game, I would break it down into four stages. In fact, one for each age, Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age, Imperial Age, and maybe a fifth one, Post Imperial Age. Now, the game gets more complex as the game develops. Obviously, in Dark Age, you start with very little population, whereas in Imperial Age, you have a lot more population, a lot more things going on. It's hard to focus on everything at once. So what I would recommend is that you take it step by step and you don't actually try to overwhelm yourself and you know right away try to learn everything to know about Imperial Age um, right off the bat. So I would actually advise that we break it down and we start by learning the basics of the Dark Age first master that and then move on to the next step. So for 1000 ELO or below, my best advice is to learn the Dark Age, where to make your eco building, you know, eco building placements, um, basic scouting with your initial scouts and how to lure boars properly. You also want to learn about upgrades for each unit and upgrades for economy. Also, you want to have a very basic plan. We're not going to get into build orders just yet, but I want you guys to have a basic plan. For example, let's say I pick a sieve like Frank's, which I do think is a good beginner sieve. My basic plan is to make Paladin. That's it. That, that's my plan. I want to make Paladin in Imperial Age. And how do I get up to Paladin? I want to make Knights in Castle Age, and then I want to make Cavalier in Imperial Age, and Paladin in, in, in Imp as well, <laughs> obviously. In, in Late Imp, I guess you can say. And then the next step is just to commit to that plan, and of course, as always, we're going to start adding in more hotkeys to learn the game that way. Let's go ahead and play a game. I have this set to Extreme AI. Maybe let's just play against the Hard AI. Um, or actually, if you're below 1000 ELO, yeah, maybe the Hard AI is a good place to start. Again, if, if you're comfortable with hard or extreme, you can go ahead and play them. And if you're comfortable with ranked and in multiplayer, you can definitely play that. Just for your argument's sake, I'm going to start with the hard AI for below 1000 ELO. I also recommend you guys pick a sieve because it's very important to have a sieve that you're comfortable with instead of constantly learning new sieves if you go random. And also, you might get a different answer from different, you know, from different top players on how to learn the game. But personally, I think the best way to learn the game is just to pick one or two sieves and actually just master them. Learn the sieve inside and out because that way you're going to always have a plan. You don't have to always be like, oh my god, what do I do? And get overwhelmed before you even start the game. So again, I mentioned the plan about making paladins. Let's do just that. That's, I'm going to pick Franks and my plan is to get the paladins. Also, because I know that people really worry about, oh, Harry, I don't play fast. How can I, how can I learn this game if I don't play fast? I don't have the same actions per minute APM as you. Um, it's impossible for me to improve. So for that reason, I'm going to be playing with one hand at this 1,000 euro below. Again, mimic mimicking the fact that you guys aren't necessarily going to be playing with the most hockeys right now. I'm going to be playing with one hand except for two hockeys, making a house and making a farm. And I mentioned those last episode. Those are important hockeys to learn right off the bat because those really speed up your game because you make so many farms and so many houses at the same time. It's not a weird flex. This is just a good way to showcase what it's like to play at a slower pace. And I'm going to show you guys that it doesn't matter. The things we're going to be focusing on is a lot more basic than playing at 500 actions per minute and completely dominating everything at once. Okay, let's hop into it. Let's get a single water and go right into this game. So to start any game, we're going to be focusing on the Dark Age. You want to start by making villagers and then immediately dropping two houses. Now, two houses will be done with the two villagers, or one house with two villagers, one house with another villager, and we want to pick up our sheep right off the bat. Dark Age is very important to get down because um, it's really, really important to master this because at the start of every game, you're going to have to deal with some Dark Age, okay? So the things you want to do at the start is just pick up your sheep. Again, we're not going to be dealing with any builders, so, you know, the idea is just to collect food at the start to be able to actually... Uh, afford villager production. So let's pick up our sheep here and we'll send some villagers down, uh, you know, down onto that one. The next step is to scout with your scout. Basing scouting patterns is just to scout around your map to find other resources sprinkled around. You, you start with always four sheep near your, near your town center and then you have two sheep in another location and another two sheep in another location. Okay. So again, notice how I'm not doing anything too crazy. I'm just looking around. I see some wood here. I'm just taking some food for the time being and I'm making some villagers. Again, don't be in any rush to do much. Um, you know, just look to scout and you know, scout your map and to see exactly what's going on. I also know I've got a boar here and a boar here. Now that you have enough, you know, villagers on food to make villager to make villagers constantly, notice I've got six or seven on food. I have enough for villager production. Let's go start to take wood. 
We'll make a lumber camp very close to the wood line. Notice I'm making the lumber camp touching and I'm making it in the middle of the wood. Very important to do so, okay? So we're gonna make it right in the middle of that wood line, touching the wood, and we'll send a few bills to, to that location. So the reason I need to actually take wood now is because, well, we need wood to make other buildings and we need wood to make houses. If not, I'm gonna get housed. Let's take a second and pause at this point in time and I can actually move around. So as you can notice, at this point, I've taken sheep with six or seven vills. Again, most pros will say six vills is enough. But again, I just want to show you that builders aren't necessarily the most important thing at this point. So just send villagers down to sheep to when you have constant villager production going. And then next is next step is to take wood. Wood and food are the most important resources for Dark Age. So we really want to focus on those. And notice that I'm only taking one sheep at a time because if you take multiple sheep at once, then, well... Food will rot because when animals are dying, they will decay. The food will run out one by one. So as I'm hunting it with like, let's say seven vills now, think of it like there's an eighth vill gathering that you're not getting the food. So if, you know, this sheep were to die at, at the same time as well, I would also lose that food. All right, let's continue going here. And notice how also my sheep are running out. So at this point, I need to find another food source. So let's go ahead and send a few to wood. And at this point, my sheep are going to run out. So let's go ahead and take a boar. I'm going to take a boar while the sheep is still running because I don't want to have at any point in time idle villagers. Idle villagers is a villager that's doing nothing. So I'm going to take this other boar and bring it back to my town center. Very nice. I'll continue sending to wood because again, wood is going to be an important resource anyways. So I'll bring in this boar and now I see that I have got a berry bush here. That's also another food source. All right, so we'll bring in the boar. How to take your boar is just to garrison your villager as it's under the TC and then we eject it with this. At this point, when you're at 13 out of 15, you want to make another house because you don't want to get housed at 15 out of 15. And if you make a house at this point, you'll avoid that. I have this deer that I can easily take later as well, but I have this berries that I will start with now just to diversify my early, um, you know, my early food intake. All right. Very nice. So to make your meal at the berries, you want to make it touching. The reason we're going to make it touching is because we're not going to add a lot of villagers to the berries. So now at this point, we're going to drop off the food to be able to make more villagers. I'm trying to keep my TC running as much as possible here and constantly scouting while taking food and wood. It's very, very simple. And I'm just diversifying my wood. Uh, my Sorry, my sources of food, I would say. Uh, not my wood. It's only one source of wood. <laughs> then I'm going to grab the second board because, well, the first one's going to run out. So I want to make sure my villagers are never idle. And I'm still looking for sheep. There it is. I'm finding much, you know, more sheep around. And now I'll bring the boar in. And again, let's focus on this boiler. So I shot it once, or I shot it twice. Only, you only need once, though. All right. Let's bring in this boar now. And watch carefully. I'm going to run it under the TC. I'm not going to panic. I'm going to shoot it with the other villagers. And then only after that, I'm going to garrison into the town center. And then eject it with this button. And then take it. All right. That's how you get your boars under your town center. All right. This next villa, we'll have to make another house. So let's go ahead and make a house with our hotkeys. There it is. And let's continue scouting for our sheep. All right. So houses will go down, and at this point we have four on berries, and we have some villagers on the hunt. That's good. We have food, and we have um, well, two sources of food, and we have a source of wood as well. I have this deer on top that you can take a look at, but for now I don't think we're gonna need the deer. I think it's just best to look for your sheep and find a you know find a good place to uh, to make some farms, and that's gonna be enough for sources of food for the start. So we'll start making some farms, and again my plan is to go to Castledge and make knights. And I want to make Paladin in Imperial Age. Um, so my personal hockey for the house here, I'm getting a question from Twitch, um, is B to build and G to make the house. I think that's the default one as well. Um, I never really changed that. So definitely feel free to use that. Now I've got some sheep here. And notice, I get this question a lot. Notice how I'm diversifying my food income. You don't want to take only boar and only sheep. And then when it runs out, you send all the vills to take only berries. That's very inefficient because you're going to have some downtime where you're not actually collecting any food. And that's very, very bad for your dark age. You have to diversify your food and make use of different um, different food sources so that when one runs out, you, are, you always have the other one running. And you don't have a million villagers walking back and forth trying to find a source, a source of food. And the reason I'm taking wood this early is to be able to make some farms later, which costs 60 wood. So again, just thought I'd take a second to mention that because it's very, very important. I get this question asked a lot. Let's keep making villagers. Now at this point, you know, I, I still need only food and wood. Um, I want to make my way up to Castle Age though. So at some point, I'm going to have to click up to Feudal Age. And for Castle Age, you're going to need some gold as well. So let's go ahead and take some gold to see how I, I can actually make the mining camp for the gold. 
But first, I'm going to need to make a house because remember, I'm 23 out of 15. So go ahead and make a house real quick. Doesn't really matter where you place it. We'll talk about house placement later on. It's important, but it's not something that you need to worry yourself at this point. Oh, look, I found some more sheep. So let's go ahead and bring those guys in and continue making our villagers. At this point, let's send our scout after we found pretty much everything on our map. Let's go send our scout to explore our enemy. And oh, look at this, a mistake from me. There's too many villas idle. That was my fault. Let's go back and actually make uh, some more farms and send them to the wood so, they're, so they have something to do. So to make your mining camp on the gold, let's go ahead and place a mining camp. And you want to place it one tile away. The reason you want to do it one tile away is that the gold has 800 uh, total gold in each pile. So the villagers will be mining the same pile for a long time. That way, or by making it one tile away, you're able to have them just you know, lined up through there in that little gap that you left. Like six or seven villagers easily without bumping on each other. And they're going to stay there for a long time because there's 800 on each. So they're not going to have to go to this second one for a long time. So this is actually the most efficient way to use your gold gathering. So remember, wood, you always make it touching because the trees are only 100 wood each. So you chop through them rather quickly. Berries, you, you make it touching because they're 125 food each. And you only have four villagers there. So you want to have them touching so there's no walking distance. On gold, we'll put a little bit of walking distance, but the reason we do that is to fit more villagers on it because it's 800 gold a piece, so they're not going to be chopping through to the next one or mining through to the next one anytime soon. Let's continue going here. Uh, and oh, look, I got some more sheep. So let's go ahead and take them. Sheep is always good. It's free food. Think of it like that. I mean, that's what it is. And oh, let's continue making some villagers here. So it might be hard to... Oh, I found my enemy. Okay, so I found my enemy. Interesting. Uh, let's just go and see what he's doing. Nothing too crazy. I don't need to focus too much on what my opponent is doing right now. I'm focusing on what I'm doing. You want to also pick up Loom here at some point in Dark Age. Feel free to do it whenever. If you're if you're scared of luring Boar, I recommend you get it before you learn any Boar. So we'll get Loom and then we'll click up. It's important to get this upgrade before you go to the Fuel Age. In case you get attacked, it gives your villagers extra uh, armor and extra HP pretty much. There it is. All right, so now I'm finding my opponent again. Let's just scout uh, scout around, see what he's up to. Uh, okay, it looks like he's also got a mining camp, some villagers there. All right, cool. Well, let's eat some more farms here. At this point, I might need some more wood. Um, I mean, it's it's really not too Im important how much of each resource you have at this point, because again, the point of this uh, or of this elo when you're still learning the game or like sub 1,000 elo is that you just want to do things at your own pace. So if you find yourself needing wood for whatever reason, just go pick up some wood. Um, you're not going to know exactly uh, what resource you need and how much of it yet, because we haven't gotten started about build orders yet and about exact timing for everything. At this point, it's very important to keep your scout active. If you're having a bad time scouting, feel free to use the auto scout button to help you scout the map. This will like hinder your ability to learn how to scout though. Um, because you're not manually scouting there, it does it by itself. But it could be a small help for you as you're learning the other parts of the game. I'm not going to showcase it. I'm going to showcase it how I'm scouting right now, which is looking around and actually taking a look and trying to find things in the dark area. Um, there's two types of scouting. I feel like I'll mention this right now real quick. There's the dark area, which is called like, I don't know, like the fog of war. Oh, no, sorry. That's um, an undiscovered area. Let's call it that, which is the black areas. That means I've never been there. I've never been here. I've never been here. Notice on the map I'm scrolling. Never been there. And then there's the fog of war, which is this gray area. That means I've been there, but I don't currently have vision of that area. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right. So again, I'm not too worried about builders. I just have a basic plan, which is to make knights. Okay. So now I'll make some villages after dark age. Now I want to make knights, but I'm going to find a problem. I don't actually, I can't make a stable. I can only make a barracks right now. You have to make a barracks to make your stable after. Well, I'm going to need two feudal age buildings anyways. So let's go ahead and make a market. And let's go ahead and make a blacksmith. Those two feudal age buildings will allow me to click up to castle age. And that's where I can actually find knights. So let's go ahead and do that. And for knights, I need food and gold. So I'm going to need a lot of food and a lot of gold. Let's go ahead and let's do that. Logically speaking, you want to have a lot of food and a lot of gold to be able to make some knights. All right. Let's go ahead and make some houses here. I see a lot of people in the chat talking about, you know, some people below 1,000. They know the Dark Age Builder. Remember, I'm doing this for everyone below 1,000. That means that I want everyone from 300 ELO to 400 ELO to 900 ELO to be able to benefit here as well. And notice that I'm taking my time and I'm just doing things, um, you know, at a very basic manner here. But of course, it's going to get more complicated as we go down this, uh, down this session or 
uh, I guess, down this um, this guide. All right, another important thing. Let's just go take some gold because, again, I need food and gold. Another important thing to talk about is economy upgrades. Now, when you're new to the game here, or I guess just starting to learn the online version of the game, you want to learn how to get upgrades, when to get them, and what they do. So let's just start with this one here. I should probably enable tips real quick. Sorry, I should have had this before. Um, I want to quickly do this fixed and two tip scales 50. Cool. Sorry about that. So notice I'm pausing, by the way. Feel free to do this in your own game. Um, not online. If you're playing as AI, feel free to do it in your own game to just take a second to breathe and think. So this one, it gives 20% faster wood chopping speed and it only costs 100 food and 50, and 50 wood. Generally speaking, economy upgrades are good in this game because it's an investment of resources. Um, and these resources doing up here are doing nothing currently. But if I actually pick up this, oh, the tooltip is under the cam. Oh, um, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, sorry, this is uh, this is rather bad. Um, maybe I should take a pause here and quickly find another way to do this here. Maybe floating could be good. Yeah, that may be better. Oh no, that's that's too that's too obnoxious. Okay, well maybe no tooltips, guys. <laughs> well, figure it out in your own games, I guess. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll read it out. I'll leave it for myself, and I'll read out every tooltip I do. Sorry about that. I'll have to edit this out in the in the <laughs> in the YouTube video, I'm sure. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do this real quick. A lot of things going on. Like I said, this is the first time I do anything like this, so um, at least not at least all in one day. So bear with me. Um, okay, so again, uh, I'm going up to Castle H here. I picked up my economy upgrades, and I got a lot of resources. And I haven't even made my way towards knights. So let's let's try to get the knights going. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a barracks here, and I'll continue making my farms. A good thing to do is get this. It makes that every farm that goes that expires gets automatically reseeded. Okay, so now I'm in Castle Age, so let's focus here on getting some knights out as fast as I can. Again, you can take a look at eco upgrades. Oh, look, I have free resources here. Let's get this one. And let's also get this one, because this is one This one is for gold. It makes your gold miners work faster, and it only costs 100, uh, 100 food and 75 wood. Let's go pick that up, and let's make a stable here. So knights are made from the stable, and notice I just clicked the building, the blacksmith. Uh, well, let's make some more farms, actually, because right now I've got a lot of gold, but I feel like I'm missing some food here. I got way more gold than I have food. So I want to actually make some more farms now. Cool. I should be doing this with the hockey, by the way, for the farms. All right. So for the blacksmith now, you want to take a look at your upgrades. So for the scale barding armor, this gives plus one armor, uh, plus one melee and plus one. Oh, I'm getting attacked. Hold the phone. How do I react to this? I'm getting attacked and this completely got me off guard. So to kind of adapt to this, the best thing to do is to get some military of my own to defend and actually clear up my opponent's army. And when you're attacked randomly, don't panic. Let's just try and adapt to this one as, as good as we can. So what I'm going to do is run the villagers, because these guys are very fragile, to my town center, and then use my knights to defend, okay? Let's make a few knights, and then send all these villagers right to my town center, garrison them. Don't ring the town bell. Because if you ring the town bell, everyone stops working. See, you guys see that? Everyone stops working. That's not very efficient at all. That's not. Look, I have got so many villas under my TC that could easily be working on farms. So instead of ringing the town bell, just send a few villagers. Look at this mess because I rang the town bell. The next time I'll react way better to it instead of what I just did. So I'll just garrison the villas in need or in, in dire need, and the other ones I'll just put out like this. Very cool. Very good. So let's defend with a few knights here. I'm gonna get the armor on the knights. This will help them deal with archers generally. And I'm still getting attacked, so let's go ahead and react to this. I'll take a few of my villagers up here and maybe take the other gold. Notice you have other golds available. And I'll make some knights to defend. He's being very annoying right now. So I'll have to make sure we're able to defend this. Okay. And again, don't panic with the town bell. Just send the villagers that are in direct danger to somewhere else on the map. And you can easily, uh, you know, find a way to, I don't know, to deal with those guys. Or to deal with the army. Let's go back here. I'm going to make another mining camp. And again, it's one tile away. So that's pretty good. And now that I've got a, th a few knights, remember these archers are still in feudal age, so I can kill them with three knights. I have one upgrade on them, which is giving them armor, and Franks get extra HP on the knights, so that's quite good. Alright, so let's go ahead and make some farms now. We have the hotkey to make farms, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, and okay, clean up his army, and now maybe I can go attack the AI as well. Alright, very nice. So, you might be wondering why I was actually garrisoning into my town center. If you put villas into your town center, they're able to actually, your, your town center is able to actually fire arrows to defend yourself, and it also keeps your villagers safe. To let your villagers go back to work, notice I pulled off a lot of farmers, click this button. 
which is the ungarrison button, and they'll go right back to work. If you want to send them to a specific location, like this villager, I want to send it to gold, you click the other button here. Oh, that's the ungarrison. That's just to go back to work. Cool. All right, I'm attacking my opponents. You don't want to run to the town center. So let's go harass his woodlands. Okay, let's go attack his woodlands. And again, my plan was simply to make knights this game, so I'm sticking with that plan. All right. Maybe I'll add a second stable. Going to two military production buildings is a really good way to double your production and get more military on the field. And now I see some spearmen, so I probably have to go back a little bit here. Oh, look at that. I'm housed, so let's go ahead and retreat a little bit while I focus on my own economy. Oh, let's get wheelbarrow. It's an economy upgrade. And let's go make some houses as well. Oh, sorry. I should be doing these with a hotkey. All right, cool. All right. And at this point, let's upgrade our military as well. Um, so let's maybe get some more armor on them. Upgrading armor on, mil on mill units is much better than upgrading attacks, so definitely keep that in mind. All right, and let's go ahead and fight these. Remember, these are just feudal spearmen. I'm not really worried. I've got knights. And let's go ahead and make some more houses while this villager's doing absolutely nothing. And let's make some knights. Why well, no wheelbarrow and feudal age? Well, because this is not a build order, and I don't know when to get wheelbarrow. I'm new to the game. I'm sub 1000 ELO, and the important thing is just to pick them up at your own pace and not rush into picking them up at the most perfect time. All right, cool. So let's go make some more knights. Again, my plan this game was very, very basic, and it was just to make a lot of knights. Okay, so now I notice I've been on one town center for the longest time, and I actually forgot about my scouts, so hey. This is not the best, uh, you know, kind of scouting and scouting game. But let's go ahead and get some more uh, harassment done with our knights. So again, I'm just using my knights now to attack my opponent. I'm constantly making knights. All right. Constantly making villager production. And constantly taking gold and, uh, and food to be able to actually afford these knights. And to be able to afford farms, which is my food source, I'm going to actually need uh, wood. So that's why you're still taking wood at this point. You always need it. All right, more knights going about, knights to each side. I'm just gonna constantly harass my opponent now. And you wanna get upgrades on the knights as much as possible as well. Let's go ahead and make another stable. And again, more knights will come out. Okay, very good. Go attack him, I'm looking for areas to attack. At this point, if you wanna add in more town centers, notice I have only one town center. If you wanna add a second one to double your village reduction, which is generally a very good idea, it speeds up your development, you can actually do that in the castle age. Although I'm missing some wood. Ooh, really good attack uh, on the on the villagers here. Go ahead and take some of those guys out. Very cool. Okay, some villagers here as well. So to do the, a, a, another town center, you simply take a few villagers. doesn't matter what you take. Uh, and you're going to make a town center on other resources. And this just lets you double your villager production pretty much. It's, it's, a very, it's a very neat trick to use in castle age. I say trick. But it's really very standard. Uh, and ooh, now I see him making some pikemen. So now my plan is kind of, you know, kind of maybe looking a little shaky because my opponent has pikemen, which is a unit that counters uh, the knight. And we know this because we spent time playing the campaign or playing, you know, uh, against, uh, you know, uh, our friends or against the AIs previous to this. Um, and we actually know a little bit about the counters in the game and the types of units. All right, so let's go ahead and attack. And if it's just one pikemen, feel free to take them on. But if there's a lot more pikemen later, we can definitely... Uh, adapt. I'm constantly making knights again from my base, and let's go ahead and continue attacking our economy. Or their economy, rather. Alright. Doing a water perfectly. Very nice. So again, I'm just constantly attacking them. And now I've got double the town centers, okay? So I've got a lot a lot of villagers will be coming out now. I'm going to make a lot of bills. I want to con constantly, ex you know, constantly develop my economy, constantly develop my base. Because again, this is a game about developing faster than your opponent and taking your opponent out as fast as possible. Hey, let's take some stone. I'll develop some more. Okay. And I'm going to continue attacking them. Notice how I'm not scared of the town center. Knights have a lot of armor, so feel free to run under the town center. It's a very powerful unit in Castle Age. Use it to its full potential here. I'm going to go ahead and constantly attack here. And again, focusing on the basics. My plan was to make knights and work my way up to a Castle Age or up to Imperial Age and make Cavalier. And there it is. The AI resigned. And this was hard AI. And I'm pretty sure for anyone under 1000 ELO, this is a good place to start. Um, if you're you know, thinking about going to rank, this is a really good place for you to start against the AI or against um, regular online players. Have a plan. Have a plan and pursue it while slowly upgrading your base and developing your town. So notice I went three stables there. 
doesn't really matter. I didn't get anything in certain order. I didn't worry myself with numbers and build orders and timings. I simply did things at my own pace. And because I had a plan, I was never really confused on what I what I wanted to do. I, I knew I had to make uh, knights. I knew I had to make uh, you know more town centers and more villages because I have to expand my economy. So naturally, I need food and gold to make knights. To make food, which is to make farms, I need wood. So notice how all the resources are here are at play in a very logical way. I didn't take any stone, and the reason I didn't take any stone is because I don't need stone to make knights right now. So while I could take, take some stone later to make some castles and to defend myself, I felt like it's much more important to prioritize knights, which I would suggest to you guys as well. Don't mine stone in the early game if you don't have a clear plan with the stone. If your plan is not to make a castle, and not to make a unique unit or something like that, or to defend yourself with a castle, don't mine stone for no reason in the early game. Mine it later on to pick up some castles and expand your uh, economy and continue developing. That's going to be it for the second episode of the series. This is, of course, the Harris 2K or Harris Guide to 2K Definitive Edition. And we've just covered for anyone below 1000 ELO on the ranked ladder or someone who's just willing to go play ranked at the moment. Let's take a look quickly at these stats. And uh, that's going to be it for this episode. We'll catch you guys next week on the YouTube uh, for the next episode in the series. And of course, on Twitch, we'll continue watching.